Africa is called the poorest continent. This Tanzanian politician tasks Africans to look inward for progress. Poverty, hunger, diseases destroy the lives of Africans because we lack leaders who serve. Thousands of Africans are drowning in oceans en route to Europe, America, and Asia, searching for better lives. On the opposite, the Chinese are influxing to Africa in millions to take the same opportunity that these Africans ran away from. Mm. Non-servant leadership cannot explain Why? In the past 10 years, in the past 10 years, six out of 12 African head of states died in Europe and Asia, sought for medical care. But these leaders, after they died, they were buried back in Africa because in Africa there are better graves than in Europe Indonesia. <laughs> We cannot continue with this situation. Seeing our mothers, women, children dying in local hospitals without service, that one cannot continue. Let us use all we have got to face these challenges. If we stand together, I see a new vision of Africa. I see the Mandelas, the Nkrumahs, the Lumumbas. And my brothers and sisters, don't say it is hard. Don't say it is impossible. Don't say you are alone. And don't say you are losing hope. Because for you to be who you are today, it is because the great leaders did not lose hope and never quitted the struggle. Abraham Lincoln never quitted the struggle. That's why America it is here today. Nelson Mandela didn't quit the struggle. That's why apartheid was stopped in South Africa. A lot of these leaders never quitted the struggle. So don't say it is impossible. Don't say it cannot be done. One young leader seeks economic emancipation for his people. Joining us on the program is Narendra Matthew, a social entrepreneur from Madagascar. You're very welcome to the program. Nice to meet you. What drives you to do the work that you do? Uh, since uh, 2011, I took all opportunities to equip myself to become an outstanding leader. We focus on uh, youth participation and since that time I always talk to young people under 24 years old and most of my friends, all my relatives, uh, they are struggling the same problems about finding jobs and I used to work in the grassroots community as well and uh, most of the people from the grassroots community are all struggling so I try to take the leadership to help them to address the struggle because the, all of the struggle are all interrelated about lack of uh, resources uh, which is interrelated to poverty so I help them to ensure for uh, a long uh, for a sustainable economic empowerment what are some of the trends that you see you know Madagascar um, in many ways is very underreported you don't we don't really get a lot of insight into what is going on there. What would you describe as some of the most major challenges that not just young people but the population in general are facing as it relates to public institutions in the country? 
Um, I guess it's uh, quite the same like in our uh, country in Africa. We are struggling about uh, corruption. We are struggling about the uh, lack of opportunities to uh, young people. And that's really impact to the economic situation of the countries because uh, young people are representing the majority of uh, the population so that demographic dividend does not really represent as a bonus for the economic uh, development of the countries. That's why uh, we are still struggling about that uh, economic situation of uh, Madagascar at this moment. When did this start for you, this, this passion you have to see young people who have not been uh, included in, you know, the processes of governance or even maybe even the economic uh, enterprise. Um, when did this start for you, this passion, and where did it come from to see these young people grow and be able to participate generally? As a background, I studied entrepreneurship, and uh, in our side, I was also always used to work with the uh, grassroots communities, which are mostly uh, represented uh, about young people. And I was used to go to that, um, to those uh, people from, uh, I can say, lower standard of living. And I talked to those people and I could really realize that there is a very big difference about um, the standard of living so that's why i was really convinced that if i can bring a part of change for those people i can make a bigger change for the community and for my country uh, in particular so that's why i decided what kind of uh, strategy will i use what kind of solution can i bring for those communities so that they can be included in the part of uh, in the process of uh, uh, ch uh, of uh, solving the economic situation of the countries.